Hey guys, Teamfight Tonky here. I am a set three master and current masters player. I'm going to start doing a shorter video series this week since all I've really played this week is Divine and I don't think we need another guide for it. Uh, with 10.21 getting so many changes, I wanna actually focus on individual items and how to utilize them fully. Uh, so the first item I wanna go over starting today is the newly updated ZZRot portal. Uh, which has a number of different uses and is frankly super strong. Uh, but it's being overlooked right now just because bows are being reserved for shivs and belts are being used for zeeks. Um, but that said, assuming the B patch shifts the meta uh, later this week, ZZROP might be on your list of slammable items, so knowing how to use it will be huge. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please like, subscribe, let me know what questions you have on the item and what other items you want me to break down. Uh, you can catch me on Twitch throughout the week at the link above my face. Uh, so if you want to learn how to use this item, let's get to it. What a quality title card. Okay, so a very brief overview of the item. It is made up of a recurve bow and a giant's belt. Uh, so its base stats are 15% attack speed and 200 health, and its effect is that at the start of combat, the wearer taunts all nearby enemies for 2 seconds. When the wearer dies, a construct with 1500, 2250, or 3000 HP, depending on the wearer's star level, uh, will spawn and taunt all nearby enemies again. The AD of the construct got buffed to a crazy amount right now, uh, so its base AD is 150, which just for reference, is higher than every single two-star four cost in the game. Uh, so early game, this unit can actually just slam and carry you so hard. Uh, one thing to note is I'm noticing people who do use this item end up using it as just a poorly utilized frontline item. This item should definitely be treated like a Zephyr or a Shroud in terms of placement and how often you're moving it around to catch the units you need to catch and yeah if you place a zephyr on the frontline unit and you just leave him there all game using zephyr wrong so apply that same logic to zz rot uh the big thing about this item is that let's see its taunt actually triggers about one second into the match. So if if you are facing two units uh there's a 50 50 shot that that unit will attack the non ZZ rot enemy and then the taunt goes off and their aggro will be pulled. So just an important little note about this item. Uh, I wanna dive into some scenarios and really break down how this item can be used. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a couple different scenarios. Don't really focus on the units on the board um, in terms of synergies or anything like that. Just consider this your front line and I want you guys to focus on who I've got the ZZ rot on. Uh, so in a standard comp like this, where let's say you have a backline carry like Ash or something like that, and you are against assassins. Uh, so what no, what I'm normally seeing, or what we normally see with ZZ Rod is people would play it at the front of the board. That's totally fine. Uh, with this new change to ZZ Rod, if there is a Talon that's going to land on this space right here, so let's just say an enemy Talon is coming here. This is the bad guy. We'll mark him with a Fawn. Um, if you put Nunu here, what's going to happen is that Talon will always be aggroed towards Nunu. There is no longer a 50-50 shot. You don't have to do anything special. You don't have to go ahead and surround your Ash with a bunch of units like this, like you normally would, and hope that Talon pulls aggro on someone else. You can leave your full front line right up here and put your one ZZ Rot unit right beside your Ash, and it will always pull aggro. Uh, so Talon's a little bit of a weird case, right? Because he's once he alts, if he kills a unit, he's going to just target the next the unit who's done the most damage. Um, but we can put any assassin here. Like, let's say it's Akali. Akali is going to fight Nunu until she dies or Nunu dies. And then even after Nunu dies, the ZZ Rot minion comes out and will retaunt the Akali. There's a very low chance that this Akali is going to make it through both of these units and then turn to Ash. Because of her positioning as well, Ash is also going to be aggroed onto her uh, as soon as this first unit that Ash is fighting dies. So this works with any carry in the corner. Um, I honestly think that once we move away from this Warwick meta, 
um, and assassins start to make it back in, ZZ Rod is probably the strongest assassin counter you can have in the game. If you can throw it on a unit, a tanky unit that doesn't need to always be frontline. So I'm going to show you some other examples uh, where we put it on Thresh and things like that. But in every scenario, you can protect whatever carry you want in the backline from assassins simply by putting a ZZ Rot unit right beside it. Um, and this is another example of how I mentioned you need to play with this item as if it's a Zephyr. Um, because it really needs to match up wherever the assassin's coming from. So like if the Akali, if all the assassins are bunched up over on this side here, your best bet is to match that ZZ Rot with that side, uh, regardless of where your carry is. Like normally you'd probably move your Ash to this corner away from them and you could pull aggro with your ZZ Rot on the other side of the map. The most important thing is you just match your ZZ Rod up with where the assassins are going. So you've got to make sure to scout to properly utilize this item. Okay, let's go over another scenario. Uh, so let's say you're against a team where there are no assassins. This Ari doesn't matter what she has. There is no immediate threat to her at the start of the match. Nothing can get to her. They have to get through your front line first. Uh, so there's two scenarios here. Uh, I think the best option is always going to be to put ZZ Rot on your least valuable frontline tank. Um, so the reason for that is, let's say, let's say we have ZZ Rot on Sejuani instead uh, in a spirit comp. So in nine out of 10 times, you're always going to run uh, Aatrox, Sejuani at the front, Thresh somewhere like this. But let's say you're in the final four now and you have to deal with two people who are frontlining everything, who don't have assassins, and then one person who does have assassins. The issue with this becomes, because you have this taunt item on Sejuani, you then need to move her as your backline unit to protect your comp in whatever comp you're running, right? So this valuable frontline only unit like Sejuani now needs to be backlined because you decided to put a ZZ Rod on her. Um, not ideal, not what you want to do, uh, and that's why I think it's a lot better to put an item like this on a position-flexible unit. Uh, so it could be your Thresh, it could be your Hecarim, it could be, I don't know, whatever brawler you don't really care about, maybe it's a Silas Holder or something like that. But I think you need to make sure that the ZZ Rot can be moved anywhere so that you can block whatever opponent you're up against. Uh, so in a situation like this, uh, let's say you are versing uh, a Lee Sin, um, which is generally Sejuani's hugest counter. Lee Sin counters Aatrox and Sedge because he will kick them out of the way and they will whiff their altar. They'll just get knocked out of the map. Uh, with an item like this, if the Lee Sin is within range of all three of these units, he will always get pulled to Thresh, and there is a very high chance that Thresh is going to live long enough to absorb that first Lee Sin kick. So what ends up happening is Thresh gets kicked across into the corner here, um, and then Lee Sin is actually over here while you still have your two main frontline units fighting, uh, which is exactly what you want in, let's say, a Spirit Ari comp. Uh, it still buys you all the time you need, freezes the correct units, and Ari gets her alt off. As soon as Thresh is kicked out of the map, the ZZ Rot minion will still spawn and it will still take aggro. So in a lot of cases, what ends up happening is the entire board is dead, except for the Lee Sin. And usually it's a lot safer cleanup, or at the very least, you're not getting completely aced right out the gate. And another quick scenario I want to go over. Uh, so this is one where you are actively against a strong Sejuani frontline. Uh, so let's say you are against the, the comp that we had on the other screen. Um, depending on where that Sejuani is, if you decide to match up your ZZ Rot and pull her aggro towards the side that doesn't have all your units. So again, a good example of this is an Elderwood Ash comp where you're usually clumping your units to one side. If you can put a sacrificial unit off to the side, one that's going to live long enough for um, to pull the alt out of the unit that you're trying to bait, like Sejuani. If, if we were to put this on a one-star Maokai, it's probably going to die before the Sedge alt, and it's not really going to matter. Um, but in this scenario, what would happen is, if Sedge is right here, 
uh, she is going to pull over to the left side and focus on the Hecarim, which means that, yeah, these guys are still probably going to get stunned, but it means that Lulu's not going to. It means that your Vagar is not going to. Um, all these units who have some extra utility that would normally just get caught in this giant Sejuani alt no longer get pulled in that. So again, by positioning correctly, you can pull very important alts off units that you really don't think about all that much because realistically you generally don't care if someone like Lulu or Vagar does get stunned by a giant sedge alt but you notice a huge difference when they don't get stunned by that alt because they're alting faster they're putting more damage down um, and all of that changes just because you decided to move your taunted unit over to the side to pull aggro instead of something like this where it's just going to pull it towards all of them right and this last quick scenario um, is more of a great interaction. So ZZ Rot works really, really well with Azir because you can effectively trap units for most of the duration of the fight. I think this is actually going to be a huge... Um, it, it's going to be a huge comp. We're going to see a lot mixing um, ZZ Rot usage with Azir. So what happens is, let's say you're playing your standard sharpshooter comp, a comp that runs Azir naturally... Uh, these Lissandras will be Azir soldiers, um, and you're against some assassins or something that's getting through your comp and getting to the back line. What ends up happening is you pull all the aggro to uh, this. So this enemy Zed, he's beating away at Hecarim. Hecarim dies, taunts. Then a second ZZ Rot minion comes out. After those are done, the Zed then goes to the next closest target and will be fighting these Azir soldiers. So the takeaway from this is knowing that placing the ZZ Rot in an area that is right near Azir soldiers, uh, but will guarantee pulling aggro, can make sure that enemy assassins or something that may be coming down from the opposite side of the map will end up having to go through four units before they can ever touch these ones. This is really good when you're facing something like Lee Sin or you're facing walkers like Shen, um, Warwick in some cases. Just depending on how they path, you have to be able to look at the map, figure out which way they're going to go, and then position it in a way that you are effectively locking that unit up on a bunch of units you don't care about. Uh, it's very important that you keep Azir alive in this, because obviously once Azir is gone, these soldiers are gone, and that wall is now cut in half, right? Um, but yeah. Okay, so I promised a short video. Uh, hopefully that sort of gave you a good idea of how ZZ Rot works, how you can use it uh, in this patch and the upcoming patches. Um, I'd like to do a couple of these videos every week, so if you have an item suggestion, let me know. If you want to see this in action, tune in again at my Twitch right above my face here. Uh, but yeah, that's all I got for you guys, so good luck on the climb.